Oh my goodness. So I definitely had this whole conversation about 2021 and being the year of trying to be a little bit more on the creative side, doing a little bit more passion projects. And this is one of the things that I wanted to do. So as you can see from the title of this, we're going to be talking about a couple different things in relation to a book I just recently finished, which is Crosshairs by Catherine Hernandez. I am going to talk a little bit about this book while making an apple pie. Now you're probably thinking, well, where did this idea come from? So Brit is going to kill me because Brit came up with this awesome tag in which you're supposed to bake something and do the tag at the same time. And I still haven't done said tag. So don't kill me, Brit. <laughs> but I was originally supposed to do it that way. And then I wanted to do a standalone review of this book. So I thought I could incorporate something a little different. And then I was like, how about I just do a segment on my channel now called cooking up a review. So while I review a certain book or a certain series or whatever it may be, I will be cooking something at the same time. So today you are going to be getting me making apple pie because it was the quickest and easiest thing that I could think of at the moment and a review of Crosshairs by Catherine Hernandez. So I hope you enjoy. This is going to switch over to me in the kitchen doing my best to talk and focus on baking at the same time which is so hard. <laughs> this is so hard it is so hard to multitask it is the most difficult thing in the world so yes definitely make sure you check out Brit's channel I will make sure that I leave her channel linked in the card symbol above but yes let's get into the review. Hey y'all so you probably have already heard what this is going to be because of the intro I'm hoping that I have made an intro at this point you have seen an intro so what i am going to be doing is clearly like i said earlier is making an apple pie while i talk to you a little bit about crosshairs by katherine hernandez so this is kind of going off the cuff a little bit here so i'm just going to show you what i have first when i do my apple pie like as things fall. So I'm just going to show you what I have in terms of ingredients first and I'll walk you through as I'm reviewing the book and talk to you a little bit too about what I do when I do make my apple pies. I am not a huge like recipe type person when it specifically comes to apple pie because I kind of just go off the cuff. So the way that I've made it before is probably not going to be the same time that I make it now. So that's what makes this entire process really interesting. The first thing that I actually need to do is get the pie crust out of the freezer. Okay, so I don't get any type of special pie crust. I do not make my own pie crust because I don't have a standing mixer, which I would absolutely love, but do not have. So I get frozen pie crust. I just take them out when I'm getting ready to prep the insides and I just let them sit. So the ingredients that I typically use I have um, these are Granny Smith apples. There are certain types of apples that you're supposed to use for apple pie simply because these are the ones that stay crisp and they don't have as much water content so your pie doesn't get soggy. Of course I use regular sugar and then I use brown sugar. I use cornstarch as a thickener. I put butter in mine, sweet cream butter, but it's unsalted. And then cinnamon, nutmeg. I know some people use like allspice too. I just keep it basic. And then not everybody does this, but I actually use a lemon to keep the apples from browning too much before I'm able to get them into that bottom pie crust. So I actually have notes on my phone, which I don't do. Usually when I review, I kind of just go off the top of my head, but I thought that I want it to be just a tad bit more organized when I did this video. So let's go ahead. The first thing I'm going to do, and I'm going to probably like lower the camera a little bit so you can actually see what I'm doing instead of having to see my face the entire time because that kind of defeats the purpose. So I'm going to make a little bit of room. Okay, so I think for this one, I'm only going to end up using four apples because every other time that I use more, I think it ends up being a little too much. So let's talk a little bit 
about what this book is about. Okay, so I think I've actually talked about this book a little bit before. Um, I know I talked about it in my December wrap up. I not my December wrap up, my January wrap up. So I talked about this a little bit in my January wrap up, and then I also talked about it in that 48 hour vlog gone wrong but I purposely decided not to disclose all of the details about this book simply because I knew that I wanted to do a full-length review of it and I wanted to do something kind of fun and unique with my reviews instead of just sitting in front of the camera so I purposely didn't review it in it in a totality but uh, this book Crosshairs was actually sent to me by Atria Books and I did not have the opportunity to get to it before its release date, but I decided to go ahead and pick it up this month, you know, a little close to release month <laughs> instead of waiting forever. And this book actually was not what I anticipated it being. I knew it was going to be like a dystopian book, but I don't think I really got a grasp of what it was going to be. And honestly, y'all, this part would be a lot easier if I had... Um, an apple core but I don't so this part always takes me a little bit longer than what is really actually necessary so Catherine Hernandez actually had written a book prior to this called Scarborough which I believe is a place in Canada if you live in Canada let me know I believe that it is <laughs> I believe that it is a place in Canada and this is their second book I believe this their second full-length novel so basically what happens in this book is that Canada is or has gone through a cataclysmic event which is it led to massive flooding and this is like a near future Canada I believe so it's not too far removed from what we're seeing here like in 2021 or what we would have seen in 2020 so what ended up happening essentially is that the flooding happens and then we start to see the rounding up as a result of the massive flooding a lot of disparities occur and then we see the rounding up of communities of color, people who identify as refugees, um, the LGBTQ2SIA community, disabled, and they put them essentially in internment camps or concentration camps. And they made them to the outside, they were telling the world that they were providing them with work opportunities because everything had changed so much because of the floods and people couldn't find work but really it was just a means for them to treat these communities horribly and the group that was responsible for doing all of this they're called the boots so this is this oppressive group and i think in my mid-month wrap-up what i was saying about this specifically is that these boots were individuals who you could call wasps white anglo-saxon protestants and they also were individuals that identified as cisgendered and heterosexual so that's pretty much where we start but this book focuses on an individual by the name of Kay, and we're getting this story through their lens and Kay is communicating all the information about this world through letters to their partner who we at this point think has pretty much just gone missing and Kay is of Filipino and Jamaican descent and they are part of the drag community and at the time that this book starts off they are in hiding and of course they're in hiding trying to make sure that they do not get captured by the boots and they are friends with an individual who is a part of what ends up being the resistance. 
and when K ends up joining the resistance, I don't want to give you too much because I don't want to spoil anything, we end up meeting a whole host of characters. So all of these characters have very different experiences. They identify differently, but we're getting the perspective of what has happened in this world through their lens. And what I think bothered me a little bit about the way that this was written is that it's through Kay's eyes, through secondary characters' eyes, and then through their flashbacks of their past life and how they ended up to where they are right now. Granted, the information was very, very interesting and very, very vital to the development of everything that happens later on in the novel, but I think that the time jumps really threw me off a little bit. There were sections that I ended up having to reread a couple of times because I just could not, I could not really get where Catherine Hernandez was going with it. Now, I think for me, I did not expect this to be as difficult of a read as it was. This is an extremely hard read. I do not have access to my review clearly because I'm <laughs> I'm doing this. I do not have access to my review at the moment, but I will say that I will link my Goodreads review down in the description box below because there are a lot of trigger warnings for this book. I mean, a lot of trigger warnings. I mean, I feel like nothing, <laughs> nothing was off limits. And because of that, this book reads heavy. And although it's under 300 pages, it may take you a while to get through it because of the fact that the content in it is just so hard to, to really get through. All right, y'all. So... To save us some time here, I'm probably going to, I'm going to time lapse this so we can get past the point where I am cutting the apples. So you still can't kind of see my face, but that's okay. You don't really need to. All right, so now that the apples are cut up, they're, I don't do any like perfect cuts or anything like that. It's just not a big deal to me. I, it's not that serious. I do a cup of brown sugar. I do a cup of um, just plain granulated sugar. And then I make sure I do add just a little bit of water to help with the sugar not sticking to the pan and I also add my lemon juice my my cinnamon and my nutmeg and there is no particular order for these things <laughs> so we're just gonna go with it I actually think I used the pan that was too small this time because I just grabbed the first thing that I saw <laughs> but I think it's actually too small this time but that's okay okay so back to what I was saying about the book I think that what is most interesting, even though I did not like the, the way in which the timelines were kind of told in this book, I think what makes this book so frightening, it's very close to what we've already seen in history, meaning that this is not anything that's new. It makes it scary because it's all a possibility. And I'm rolling the, um, the lemon, by the way, if you wonder what I'm doing, just to help get the, the juice out. So it's really, it's, it's a strange experience reading it because you can actually see things like this happening. And it also, I believe, is important that this book took place in Canada and not the United States. I do not live in Canada. I do not have any family that is from Canada. I've never been to Canada. However, just from having conversations and what I've seen, I think that a lot of times 
I think people have said that Canada has its faults as well and that a lot of times it can come across as if Canada has never done anything wrong or Canada doesn't have its issues especially when you think about it in terms of how horrible things have been here in the U.S. for, for at least like the past well it's always been not so great but the spotlight on the issues especially within the past couple of years has just been horrible and I think it's important that this book took place in Canada because it shows that no country is perfect no country has a perfect history no country can say that they don't have skeletons in their closet or that they haven't treated marginalized groups in in a horrible way so that was one element that I, I found very interesting I don't know if anybody else has necessarily picked up on that but I thought that that was a very important aspect of this book okay so while that is starting to heat up I am gonna move the camera up so you can see my face so there were a couple elements in particular that I did really really appreciate just certain conversations that were a part of this book that really did mean a lot to me in terms of like reading this book and really enjoying it and the first one that I did not actually talk about in my written review but is one that I have notes on which is why I keep notes because sometimes my written reviews don't always reflect everything that I'm thinking while I'm reading a book or my experience after I've read a book. So Kay, like I said before, who is our main character, is of Filipino and Jamaican descent. And there is quite a bit of anti-black rhetoric that goes on between Kay and their mother. Kay clearly is interested in knowing more about the black side of their family and their mother definitely has an issue just even visually about the way that Kay appears in terms of their hair. And I found it very interesting that that commentary was made about anti-black rhetoric, especially coming from another BIPOC individual, which brings forth the conversation that anti-blackness can exist <laughs> amongst BIPOC groups. I mean, any anti-whatever can exist amongst BIPOC groups. I think that sometimes we think that we can't be discriminatory or racist against each other because we're in marginalized groups but that's not true and i'm happy that that was addressed because that is something that happens but i don't think that the conversation about anti-black rhetoric amongst other bipod groups really gets discussed i think that when we think anti-black we usually think black and white and not other marginalized groups that may have anti-black sentiments as well so I was actually surprised about that, but I was happy that it was addressed or brought to the forefront that stuff like that actually can happen. It was so crazy, like I turned the handle in, like my mom has always taught me like whenever you're cooking, turn the handle of your pot in so you don't like hit it and then, you know, stuff goes wrong. Okay, so a little bit back to not seeing my face again because I'm in the process of trying to get this situated <laughs> start making this work here okay so one of the two other elements outside of the anti-blackness rhetoric conversation that Catherine Hernandez was having there were two other elements that I particularly enjoyed and that was the conversation about active performatism and then also allyship what does it mean to be an ally? I know that's been like conversations that we've been having quite a bit in this community, especially with the discussions that were sparked in 2020 during the summer of 2020. So there is one particular quote that really resonated with me in terms of talking about performative allyship. And it's on page 123 of the novel, which may be different because I have an advanced reader copy of it. So I'm hoping that this quote even still exists in the actual, in the actual book. But 
It says white people are happy to go on their social media and share quotes from Martin Luther King Jr. on MLK Day, but as soon as they have their back up against the wall, as soon as they're about to lose something, or in the case of the floods, when things get scarce, they're quick to mark their territory, which is kind of the same conversations that we've been having about performative activism in our community and how everybody was sharing black squares on Instagram and on Twitter and everybody was doing this and everybody was doing that and then we went back to doing exactly what we were doing before because the stakes weren't high for those who were not directly impacted and I think that Catherine Hernandez makes a great point in saying this that it's easy to want to have conversations when all eyes are on you. Your back is against the wall or you feel like you're going to lose something, you're not as invested in making a difference anymore or you just don't care anymore because it doesn't impact your life. And when I say you and you're like, I'm not here trying to target anyone, but and I find that conversation to be extremely true because I think that is something that I now have seen with my own eyeballs, which is super unfortunate. Okay, so y'all can probably tell from the angle, wiping down the cabinet here, but y'all could probably tell from your angle that this is like really, really like soupy-like. So you don't, you don't want that whenever you're putting your apples into your apple pie like you, you don't want that because then it's going to make the crust like really really soggy and stuff and you don't you don't want that to happen so i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually let that cook for a little while just to let it kind of semi get softer like the apples get a little softer and then it kind of see if it'll thicken up a little bit by itself and then I'll come in with my butter and my cornstarch and I'm going to do a taste test to make sure that this is what I want in terms of taste. So we'll be right back. Okay y'all and we're back. So I am back while I, well I was off camera but for y'all it's going to be consistent. I actually went ahead and I added my butter in it is just the right temp for me to add my butter in and as you can see it's still really really soupy which is fine what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm gonna add cornstarch which this is the cornstarch that I use nothing too special I don't measure it I just put some in wait for it to settle and then <laughs> I really do do this off the cuff y'all no recipe no nothing just kind of you know cook with your soul so Going to the other aspect that I was talking about in terms of what I liked about the conversations that Catherine Hernandez was having, definitely the conversation that revolved around allyship as well. I think at this point everybody knows how I feel about the term allyship and the fact that I think that people get it misconstrued and think that they can call themselves an ally when you don't give yourself that title and Catherine Hernandez talks a little bit about that as well and what I do like that Catherine Hernandez did is that there's a specific quote in this book that says that allyship is not a noun or being an ally is not a noun ally is a is a verb so essentially what that means is that if you are using the term ally that means you're being active you're doing stuff and what was also pretty ironic is that not too long after that quote there was another quote and i almost want to read it for you verbatim because i don't want to misquote and lose the importance or the message behind it and it says what will it take for you to wake the hell up what are you willing to lose what horrible thing are you willing to watch before you understand that you have to change first so it was one of those conversations where it was kind of like what do you have to see happen before you're willing to do what was right what are you willing to see happen and it reminded me very much so of the 
situation with George Floyd where it was not the first time that a black man had been killed. It was not the first time that a black man had been killed in a very public way. And it was one of those situations where it's like, why did it take that? Why did it take that moment for people to wake up and realize what had been happening in this country for hundreds of years is not right? How many more black people have to die in order for people to wake up and realize, hey, this shouldn't be happening or hey, I need to do something about it. I need to change myself. It it just, I, I resonated with that so much because of the fact that I was so frustrated. And it's not that it's a bad thing that people are now wanting to make a change and educate themselves, but it's frustrating because it took that. It literally took that. And it took something that was not new to the black community happening in order for people to say, I want to educate myself. I want to learn about system, systemic oppression or systemic racism and I want to do better and it's like if that hadn't happened would no one want to do better? Would we still be in the same situation that we were in prior to George Floyd? That was just those, those three components, the anti-black rhetoric, the conversation about performative activism, and then the conversation about allyship were super important to me and really huge reasons as to why I resonated with the book because while the summary of this book does say that it takes place in a near future Canada, it's things that literally happened. <laughs> in 2020 while we are not seeing at the level in which we see this mass movement of groups that are targeted that are considered quote unquote others while we don't see mass movements of that happening right now they are happening to certain groups and it's being kept hush hush and it's not in the forefront of a lot of conversations but it's so strange because you could see something like this actually happening you could see this happening in the world kind of turning a blind eye to it. So I'm going to let this thicken up and then when it thickens up we're going to move it into our press and talk a little bit about some other aspects of the book. Okay so I don't know how well you guys can see this but this is it actually thickened. So all right so I moved it back on my face now a little bit just so I can actually put the top of the pie crust on. So I think that while this novel is particularly dark and heavy hitting, I mean, when I say that Catherine Hernandez does not hold back, I literally mean like nothing is held back. So I, what I do like is that even though it is particularly dark, and this is the part that I always messed up <laughs> getting this top getting this top part on because I always mess up the the second layer of crust but I never feel like it has to be perfect <laughs> maybe that's the problem but what I do like is that this book is hopeful it it's not a book where you feel like there's no hope for change and it kind of relates to what I was saying when I talked about my favorite books of 2020 I had put Kwame Alexander's book as my favorite book of 2020 like my number one and his book was all about race and hope and I will always say because just being honest I sometimes have a difficult time being a, a hopeful person not a positive person just hopeful sometimes about things changing especially when you see certain things you you frequently feel like yeah this is just not going to change things are going to go back right to the way that they were and then when you don't see change you're kind of like this is exactly what I'm talking about so what I do like is that even though we are working with a dark 
team here we're working with some heavy heavy content warnings there is this constant theme of hope and that things can and will get better and i think for a novel that touches on such graphic means of discrimination and racism and homophobia transphobia it's important to leave that lingering feeling of hope because if not i don't know if i ever would have gotten through this book and the hope is laced throughout the book and there are some good moments there are moments where we get to see characters who had happy moments who had good friendships and good partnerships with other people prior to the events of the boots coming into play all right y'all so like i say my crust that goes on the top is really not that pretty it's a little damaged in some areas but i'm gonna go ahead and put that in the oven and I will show you what it looks like when it's finished and give you my final remarks. Okay y'all. So I finished the pie. It was done baking. Ta-da! <laughs> so it was fun making that and I'm sure I will have a slice. But just to wrap up my thoughts about Crosshairs by Catherine Hernandez, I did end up giving this one 4.5 stars. It is one that I really, really did end up enjoying. Like I was saying before in the earlier part of the review, it was a tough read, but there's so much important aspects of this book. So many important just conversations and just parts of it that I really resonated with. And I do like that element of hope. I know I talk about that a lot, but for me, I think that was very vital to the context of the story as a whole is including hope and that message that things can't get better so 4.5 stars if you have not read crosshairs i employ you to try it out give it a go be easy on yourself take it slow though lots of trigger warnings like i said my review will be down in the description box below if you want to see exactly like content wise what you should be on the lookout for just in case there are any of your own personal triggers if you like this style of reviewing let me know if there's anything that you would specifically like me to review anything you would like to see me make within reason <laughs> if there's anything that you would like to see me make within reason then i would be happy to do it i'm hoping that this will be a consistent way for me to do more standalone reviews while providing a little bit of more entertainment than me just sitting down in front of the camera so if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you want to see more content from me click the subscribe button if you're interested in following me on social media all those links will be down in the description box below and if you're interested in supporting this channel all those links will be down in the description box below as well and i'll be back with another video soon